the Jacksonville Jaguars have a big problem on their hands. It is the pass rushing problem going into 2023 and into the future. They have a lot of holes when you look at their pass rushing depth chart in terms of actual production that they've gotten thus far. You look at Josh Allen and then Trayvon Walker is really the only two you have going into the future. You lose Arden Key, you potentially lose Dewan Smoot. Now, from an analytical side, the Jaguars were pretty productive in the pass rushing game. They had 386 pressures, according to PFF, last year in 2022. You look at the Eagles, who were the best pass rushing team in 2022. They had 401 total. But you look at what the Jaguars are losing. Arden Key is gone. He was, I believe, the second highest pressure number for the Jaguars. You look at Dewan Smoot. He had one of the top five pressure numbers for the Jaguars in 2022. You lose those two guys, you're losing a massive chunk of the pass rush that was already kind of pretty mediocre to begin with. The Jaguars need to solve this problem because it is going to be a massive hindrance on them going into the future. When you look at this offense that they have, they're going to need a defense that supports it. And when you have a team that cannot get to the quarterback, like it looks like they might have going into the season, you're going to have to figure that problem out if you want to have success in uh, January and potentially even into February. Now, it's no secret that losing that is an issue. Obviously, the Rayshon Jenkins restructure opens up a ton of cap room for them. They have the room to go get somebody. It looks like they're not going to go get anyone until the draft. It seems like their focus is on the 2023 draft. But with the fact that they're probably going to have about $10 million to play with, and that's factoring in the 2023 draft class, they're going to have about $10 million to play with. They can open up and open up that checkbook, go get one of these guys that we're going to talk about later in the video. But just like the Jaguars seem to have transitioned their focus to the draft, I'm going to do the same. These are some guys that I really like going into the draft in various positions throughout the draft. Some could potentially even sneak their way into the back end of the first round, or we could even be potentially looking at you know maybe a trade-up into round three, somewhere in that range. These are good production guys that I think would be a great asset for this Jaguars team in 2023. So let's jump right into my draft prospects. Now, the first guy I want to talk about is Andre Carter coming out of Army. You know, the big thing with him, is he going to be able to put the weight on that, you know, the military academy had him keep off for his service requirement. But if he gets drafted, he can potentially postpone that service requirement. And I think he is going to be an absolute freak in the NFL. It's pretty much a surefire guarantee that he is going to get drafted in the draft. And when you look at his size, he's just a giant human being. 6'7", 250 pounds, probably going to put on some extra weight as well. But then you look at his giant build, 82-inch wingspan, 34-inch arms. Guy is a giant human being. That's something Trent Baalke looks for, just a very long, lengthy human being that can go get after the quarterback. I think you're going to see that transition very well. He had success with the limited weight he had on his body. You allow him to put another 20 pounds on. You might see a huge uh, jump in production and development from Andre Carter. I do think he is worth a potential look at. You know, you're looking at 56. I think that's exactly where he's going to fall in that range. But another guy, Isaiah Foskey out of Notre Dame. 27 sacks over his three years for the Fighting Irish. Ultimately, PFF had this to say about him as well. His rush never takes him out of the play. I think that's a huge thing to look at. You look at players, you know, they just end up running away from play we have nightmares as Jaguar fans of Caleb on chase on just kind of missing the play the ball runs by him he has his back turn has no idea you know Taven Bryan ends up just trying to block his own players because and you were, we were tarnished by people not knowing where the ball is and that seems like something that Foskey is great at and that's just good football IQ at the end of the day and you can't teach that you know 6'5 262 a little bit shorter arms 33 and 6 eighths of an inch uh, arms, but still big, big body you can put on the defensive line. I think he would be a great asset. I think he probably will kind of slip into that third-ish round where that'll be a better spot for him. I don't think you take him in the second round, but still he would be a great addition if you want to go, you know, maybe corner and then guard, corner, you know, tight end, whatever. If you still need to address that move, I think Foskey would be a great addition to the team. Now, here's a guy I tweeted about today. I think he will be a massive upgrade to what the Jaguars have, and I think he has true potential to be a great outside linebacker in the NFL. Derek Hall out of Auburn. He is just a huge human being. You want to talk about 6'3", 252, 34 and 3 8 inch arms. Great pass rusher. You know, he played a lot at Auburn. Uh, and the outside linebacker spot, he has experience as a 3-4 linebacker, exactly what the Jaguars play. And that's kind of something, you know, we talk about Trayvon Walker struggling to adapt to having to kind of play that role. Well, great. Now you have somebody that you can work with and put him in that spot. And then you have more wiggle room 
with Trayvon Walker. I think that would be an incredible pickup if you were to get him into the second round. Now, final guy I want to talk about is Will McDonald IV. This would probably be one of the few guys I would consider taking in the first round. You know, 28 sacks in just over 650 pass rushing snaps while he was a Cyclone up at Iowa State. The Draft Network has him playing the outside linebackers in a 3-4 again. Same thing like with Hall. You open up things to do with Trayvon Walker, and then you also add another great pass rusher with, once again, giant intangibles. 6-4, 239. Is he a little light? Yes. But still, 34 and 7 eighths of an inch arms. Huge, lengthy arms. He's going to be a good asset to any team in the National Football League. I do think if you're going to take a pass rusher and Will McDonald's available, I think you kind of have to toy with it. Maybe Brian Branch, maybe Osiris Torrance. And then if Will McDonald's there, I think you slide his name into that conversation as well. There's a lot of great pass rushers early in this draft that I think would be great rotational pieces earlier in their career and then develop into starters and maybe their second, late to second, early third year in the league. It's going to be littered with it. I think they have to address it in their first two. I could probably drag it out to three, but I think this is one of their biggest needs going forward, and I do think they need to address it in their first couple picks uh, at the end of the month here in April. Now, you know, those guys I think would be great assets to add in the draft, but you look post-draft, and it seems like that's what the Jaguars are doing. They're going to try to add one of these free agent pass rushers after the draft, and I think a great name that they should have on speed dial ready to go the second the draft closes. You get your undrafted free agent guys, but I think you should be focused on bringing in Leonard Floyd. He's going to be 30 years old when they start the league uh, season this year. And, you know, you're looking at a guy, 50 total pressures and back-to-back seasons. I think he would fit really well into the Jaguars 3-4 scheme. And just again, not only are you bringing in somebody that can you can give more versatility to your team with, with um, being able to move Trayvon Walker, you now have a mentor for that guy you drafted early in the draft. You know, he has a Super Bowl ring from the Rams, and he was a first-round pick of the Bears. Ultimately, you're getting a great, great guy who's flirted with 10 sacks in his last three years. You kind of, you look at Unique Ngakwe, where he's kind of a 10-sack, just pass rushing guy. Leonard Floyd's going to be able to give you that, and I think, and a little bit more as well. You know, he's had 11, 12, and 9 sacks in his last three years in 2020, 2021, and then 2022. He doesn't have the huge long arms that long, uh, Trent Baalke looks for, but at the end of the day, he is still very impressive once he gets onto the field, and you can't, you know, sometimes intangibles are great to look at, but you need to go off of the on-the-field production, and that's what Leonard Floyd has done. Now, let's talk about a guy that I was very high on, them bringing in last year. They didn't. He goes up to Baltimore, has a great year, and then he hits the free agency market once again, and that is Justin Houston. He's kind of reached that point in his career, kind of Von Miller reached it as well, where he's just a mercenary, basically. He's, you can sign him to be just a pass rushing specialist, and that's exactly what you're going to get. He had a great year. He led the Ravens last year in sacks, and ultimately led some, uh, they let him go. He's going to be 34 whenever the league season kicks off, but he's still playing like he's 28. He is just he's an incredible asset that could be brought in to be that assassin on passing downs, kick Trayvon inside. Now you have Justin Houston on the outside, so you have a package potentially of Roy Robertson Harris, Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, and then Justin Houston. That sounds like a pretty great combination if you ask me. But then another guy potentially entering that maybe a mercenary part of his career, but he still kicks it up in the postseason, that's Frank Clark. Once again, he was a great addition to uh, get brought in to Kansas City. Does he do something here in Jacksonville? I don't know. He probably he is my third one that I think they should bring in on this list. But at the same time, just an absolute freak of nature. 6'3", 270 pounds, and then those 33 and a half inch arms. Or excuse me, 34 and a half inch arms. Just very, very consistent throughout the season. Think, you know, almost the way Dewan Smoot is. You know you're gonna get something good out of him, and you just gotta kinda buy the time until you get a big pop in the production that one to two games, but you're still going to look back and be like, all right, he was pretty productive throughout the year. But speaking of Dewan Smoot, I would absolutely love to see him back in the teal and black. There's been a rumor that he does want to take an injury deal. He thinks he's still worth, you know, I'm coming off of a great season. I led the Jag. He's thinking I led the Jaguars multiple, multiple weeks for months of the season where I led the team in sacks ultimately. And he was very close to the lead whenever he did get injured, unfortunately, late in the season up in New York. And that's going to be a big thing hindering him. He got injured very, very late for an injury that has a long recovery time. You're probably not going to see him back until probably week six, that range. So you're going to be losing out on a third of the year for a guy that's really kind of probably going to be wanting, you know, four million, five, six, potentially $6 million. You know, he signed a two-year $10 million deal back a couple years ago with the Jaguars. Is he looking for something like that? Or does he take a one-year prove it He's familiar with the scheme 
that Mike Caldwell runs here in Jacksonville. He's familiar with it. And at the same time, it keeps that continuity. The pass rushers are familiar with him, and he uh, he just understands the scheme here in Jacksonville. So I'd love to see Dewan move back in the teal and black, but I totally understand if it's just not in the cards for a guy that is coming off a big injury. The team doesn't have a lot of cap space to play with, and they're also probably not going to have a ton of room to work with. You look at they're probably not going to move on from Chase on. They're going to keep Josh Allen. They're going to keep Trayvon Walker. And now you're looking at potentially adding a pass rusher in the draft and then adding a Leonard Floyd, a Justin Houston. It's going to be hard to squeeze in a Dewan Smoot on top of all of that as well. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below who I think should be added to the team throughout the coming weeks as we look to the draft and then uh, post draft as well. Let me know what would you grade these moves if they were to be get, uh, if they were to be had by the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to have those conversations with you down below in the comment section. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content here in the Fan Cave. Stay safe and go Jaguars. You can't have a newcomer come in and steal a show. Yeah, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs>